Let's look at how the memory is organized inside of the PIC. This is a 32-bit system, which means that every address for the 8 bits of memory um, is stored with a 32-bit number. And an unsigned 32-bit number goes to 4 billion something. So that means there's 4 billion addresses because every address can be uh, stored with this unsigned 32-bit number. The PIC that we're using has nowhere near 4 billion bytes of memory when you add up the flash and the RAM and the special function registers. Um, so that means that we can play some tricks by saying that a lot of these addresses don't exist. So let's double up on the physical addresses that we have. Let's give every physical address maybe two addresses in code and then we can um, maybe try to speed up our code by having this weird map of um, one physical address has two virtual uh, actual addresses in code. So to, to really think about how this works, let's consider our uh, CPU. This is the, the main brain inside of the PIC. How does the CPU work? Well, it says, I need an instruction. So it goes to flash. This is where, um, when we write our code, uh, it gets compiled, it gets stored into flash memory. Um, the CPU goes and says, I would like an instruction. And the flash says, okay, here's an instruction. And our code might look something like, uh, the variable C is equal to the variable A plus the variable B. So in C, that's a simple single line of code. But in machine code, in the assembly language, there's uh, more specific steps that happen here. It says, let's allocate some memory to store this variable C. Let's go fetch the value of A. Let's fetch the value of B. Let's sum them into some temporary space. And then let's copy that summation into C. So this one line of C turns into many lines of machine code, and each of them has to be grabbed from Flash and then put into the CPU so that it can run through them and do all this stuff. Okay, so it, it, it grabs um, uh, these instructions, then it goes to RAM. So RAM is where uh, our variables are stored, and it says, let me go um, allocate some space for C, and we go grab the value of A and B, and each of these clocks, like each of these uh, instructions is taking like one clock cycle. Uh, or one eighty millionth of a second. Um, so the data is coming back and forth from RAM. The instructions is coming back and forth from Flash. Um, one thing we can do to try to speed things up is recognize when are we doing things um, kind of like maybe over and over. When are we accessing the same part of RAM several times? When are we grabbing instructions that are maybe in a loop? Can we store them locally within the CPU so that the CPU will realize when it needs a variable for RAM, maybe I don't have to go all the way to RAM and get it back. I've already got it located inside of my local memory inside of the CPU, and those are called the CPU registers. I'll just write reg. And you could think of them as RAM that is built into the CPU, and there's very few of them. There's like 32-bit uh, 32, uh, 32 numbers inside of the CPU that are these special registers. And our code, once it's been processed by the compiler, it might recognize when occasionally we don't need to go and grab something in RAM because we've recently used it. It's already still in the CPU registers. Let's just keep reusing it. So that will speed things up. The problem is that sometimes we don't want to do that, um, and the compiler will be tricked. So for instance, we have also peripherals. Uh, so the peripherals are things like our I.O. pins, our communication ports, uh, anything that's hooked up to hardware. And the peripherals can be programmed independently of the CPU. So the peripherals can be initialized to read from the computer, store the things that are sent from the computer into RAM without the CPU having to check to see, did something get sent, should I read it and then put it in the RAM? That speeds up um, our code a lot. But that means our CPU might try to get some value from RAM, like the latest character we received from a computer, store it in the CPU register, and then it'll keep acting on it within the CPU register because why go get it from RAM? I still have it the last time I used it in the CPU register. But in the background, the peripheral has changed that value in RAM. And now I have two instances of the same variable. It exists in RAM, and another value of it exists in the CPU register, but that one's old.
So somehow I need to um, specify that a variable that I declared should not be stored in this CPU register. So this uh, ability to save things um, inside of CPU registers, this is called the cache. So you, you might have heard this uh, when you're buying uh, you know, a microprocessor for your computer, how big is the cache? Usually a bigger cache means uh, everything can run faster because more data can be stored locally in the CPU. So our PIC has a very small amount of cache. That's a subset of the CPU registers because there are other registers within the CPU that do other things. Um, but we need to be able to specify what variables should be able to be cached and what shouldn't be cached. So what shouldn't be cached? Um, uh, sometimes RAM, so things that should not be cached. Uh, RAM. Um, one reason why we might not want to cache RAM, although we can cache RAM, is that the RAM is actually very fast. The RAM is accessible within one clock cycle. Um, things that should definitely be cached are things that are slow to access. For instance, flash. Our instructions only run at like 30 megahertz. That's as fast as you can get them out of memory. But the CPU can run faster than that. So it'd be nice if the CPU could prefetch them from flash, store them in the cache, uh, and then make them available faster. Should definitely not um, cache anything to do with the peripherals, which we call special function registers. We'll have another video specifically on SFR soon. Um, but anything that the peripherals are doing could change on an instance notice. So don't take their value, store them in the cache, and then keep operating on them. Every time you need to use an SFR, you should go read it again, which might be slightly slower, but uh, at least it's the most recent value. So that's how you should think about what should be cached and what shouldn't be cached. Um, if it's changing in the background, um, if uh, it's... Uh, fast to access, don't cache it. If it's slow to access, you should probably try to cache it. So in terms of our um, address, how does the uh, compiler know should something be cached or not be cached? And how can it kind of quickly make that decision without having some kind of if statement in the background of the code saying, is this variable cached before I try to use it? Should I try to load it? That kind of thing. Well, we have 32 bits for every address, but we don't need nearly that many. So when you think of an address, an address is going to be something like 0b, and then there's 32 ones and zeros. Let's reserve the leftmost three, so the three most significant bits, to say those three bits um, will tell us whether this should be a cacheable or non-cacheable variable. And then the compiler, when it goes through and says, OK, everything in Flash will get three bits in the front that say this can be cached, and everything in the peripherals will have addresses that the three bits say it should not be cached. And every time the CPU hits an instruction uh, that says, go grab a, this piece of memory for me to act on, it will, in hardware, check the first three bits to immediately know whether that's in the cache potentially already or it is not, and it has to go read it. So that means we have uh, physical addresses, uh, PAs. Um, and really, the first three of the 32 bits that represent this address um, aren't real. They're, they're really just inside of the CPU to, to remind it whether it's cacheable or not. So you can take a virtual address, which is if you were to look at your compiled code and see, oh, this variable lives at this address. You can look at the first three bits of that address to see, uh, did the compiler make it a cacheable or non-cacheable value? And inside of the CPU, what it's doing is it's taking the virtual address, which is coming from the code, and it's anding it with the hexadecimal number um, 1, F, F, and so there's like seven Fs, and the leftmost um, uh, hex character here in binary is 0B0001. So when you and something with uh, that number, it's essentially removing uh, those three bits. So the physical address always ignores those first three uh, bits. So our uh, address and physical space uh, really is more like 29 bits. And then we're reserving those three kind of left special bits to know if something is cacheable or not. 